I am a research scientist and applied research scientist at uh, the MIT IBM Watson AI Lab. Our lab is just one year old and we're focused on joint academic industry research uh, with MIT and also with a few select member companies uh, to make fundamental advancements in AI. Uh, my team, which is here today, is one of 49 projects that cross many different uh, domains and applications. And today I'm excited to share with you a, what we call a first look paper at uh, scalable graph convolutional networks for financial applications, including uh, anti-money laundering, or AML, which we'll talk about today. So we've seen deep learning do remarkable things on Euclidean data, audio, images, video, but not so much yet on graph structured data until very recently. Graph data is structurally and fundamentally different. It's all about relationships between data. Think social networks, gene expression networks, knowledge graphs, you name it. Graphs are all around us. And in finance, we can think about trading, hedging, and asset management, supply chain finance and optimization, lending and securitization. Each of these can use graphs to capture relationships and interactions between different types of entities, often with a time series component and often in a dynamic setting. The problem is deep learning on graph data is extremely difficult computationally because of the combinatorial complexity and nonlinearity involved in processing graphs of any meaningful size and density. And it's precisely the information hidden in that complexity that make graph data so interesting. Recently, we've seen an exciting and ex acceleration of work on graph convolutional networks, or GCNs, with special attention to the question of scaling. With GCNs, we begin with certain attributes to describe the nodes and edges, and we use convolutions over the graph to pull out the hidden properties and patterns. This is called node embedding, and the objective is to achieve a better vector representation of each entity. Oops. In layman's terms, you can think about this as each node asking the age-old question, who am I? It's really an existential question with infinite complexity, but we need a vector of finite length, so we have to bound the model, or it's going to take a prohibitively long time, and we have to find a way to do so without sacrificing the accuracy that we want. And this is the challenge of scalability. Earlier this year at iClear, my colleagues Jia Chen and Teng Fei Ma presented a new method called Fast GCN. And if I could sing their praises for a minute, this work really represents a big step forward on scalability. Fast GCN was able to beat previous speed benchmarks by two orders of magnitude. And it does so by using a variant method for important sampling and by in performing integral transformations during the node embedding process to account for node interdependency. Building on FastGCN, we're now exploring how we can advance graph deep learning further, and finance presents some interesting use cases. I've mentioned some of these, but today I want to mot motivate the problem of anti-money laundering. At a high level, money laundering is simply the concealment of criminal money flows via layered transfers involving multiple banks and or legal businesses. I don't know if anybody here is with me on the Ozark, but uh, do, if you haven't started Ozark yet, don't start it right before a paper deadline. It will, uh, it will suck your life away. <laughs> um, Anti-money laundering, on the flip side, is a regulatory requirement with five key component parts. Um, we don't have time to get into all of them today, but in the paper, we're really focused on the transaction monitoring systems and the analysis side. Unfortunately, uh, with the billions of dollars that's spent on AML, the bad guys are still winning. Europol estimates that only 1% of criminal proceeds are actually confiscated today. Here's a quick example of uh, the, the penalties for noncompliance. Uh, the Commonwealth Bank of Australia earlier this summer was fined 534 million US dollars uh, 700 million Australian dollars for violations involving its intelligent deposit machines. And this is really a, uh, a cautionary tale that reminds us that calling something intelligent uh, and using AI does not make it intelligent. We often get wrapped up in the compliance side, but uh, the human suffering side is very real and I think more important to focus on. Um, there's a $40 billion human trafficking industry, for example. Um, and 
these these industries have to move money in order to 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 cause the human suffering that they do cause. So uh, this is not just a mundane matter for regulatory compliance. Um, this is something very real for many people around the world. Here's a quick snapshot of a transaction monitoring um, uh, system paired with you know your customer details. And we don't have time to look at this. If you looked at it closely, you'd find some suspiciousness uh, with regard to this Mark Weber character. Uh, but here I want you to focus on the graph construction. So there are many ways to construct a graph. In this, in this case, we're constructing a graph where each node is an account, and, um, and the edges are the aggregate transactions uh, between account. And then each node and each edge has certain known properties, attributes, uh, labels. Often, in, uh, generally in AML, we're dealing with sparse labeling of flag transactions and uh, suspicious activities reports. Um, and we're, and the, 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 the project of uh, a GCN is going to be a semi-supervised learning um, uh, task. Here are some uh, tools in the modern AML tool, toolbox. These are tools that, uh, for example, IBM's Criminal Insights Group is, 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 are using to work with client banks. I'm going to speed up here a little bit. Um, these are two experiments we, we, we ran in the paper just to, again, as a first look at applying GCNs for uh, AML. And you can read more uh, details in the paper itself. But, um, but we were happy to see the takeaways from this is that FastGCN did perform well on an, a transaction data structure. Um, and its, and its, speed, its promise of speed and scale, both on the high performance computing side and on the uh, FastGCN method, uh, are very promising and motivate further work. Um, I will skip this and get to one of the exciting aspects uh, is the team. Um, this MIT-IBM partnerships create some really interesting opportunities. We're working with Charles Lyserson's High Performance Computing Group. Charles, some of you may uh, have read his book when you first got into, uh, into algorithms. Um, and, uh, and as I mentioned, my colleagues Jia Chen, uh, and Teng Fei Ma, and uh, as well as Toyo Toyo so, Toyo so, Suzumara, who has a deep domain expertise working with client banks in this space. Um, so the takeaways here to wrap up uh, our graph deep learning is emergent and exciting, especially for financial applications. Uh, and there are uh, research opportunities uh, with IBM, MIT, IBM. We would love domain expertise, and we would love data partners so that we can make things that really. Uh, will make a difference for your organizations. Thank you. Thank you much.